Landbreed Lawn Care is looking to add some more lawns for the 2024 season. If you or someone you may know is interested, you can contact Austin Landgreeb at 641-660-7874 for free estimates. Landgreeb Lawn Care will also travel outside of the Sigourney area. Bush and small tree work, lawn rolling, and much, much more. Landgreeb Lawn Care for all your lawn care needs. Call 641-660-7874. Mowing, rolling, sweeping, snow blowing, and lots more. Now doing skid loader work. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kevin Hempel. Once again, still again, actually, with uh, the Beacon of Hope Project in downtown Oskaloosa, Iowa. I uh, just want to say welcome to the Steve uh, Shetler media team and crew and everybody that's watching uh, this encouraging word every week. I really appreciate you. My family appreciates you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about hope in the face of adversity. And so uh, I was in Iowa for seven days uh, recently, and we kind of felt like we were coming in like a like a fire, almost like a tsunami. And um, and I'll tell you, uh, Iowa did did uh, definitely showed up. Uh, there were a lot of things that happened while while I was there. Um, one of them majorly was actually I got the opportunity to sit with uh, sit with Steve and. Uh, his team members and just talk about all the things that are happening in Iowa. We're going to be doing a uh, ultra run coming up here soon from Oskaloosa to another city, which I'm not going to announce yet because it's coming. Um, and then also uh, we got the opportunity to talk about just all the things that are really happening in the, in the Steve Shetler media life uh, and, and how he's just been kind of really going for going for things and just spreading the, the beautiful word and just helping the communities as well. Um, Saturday, Sunday was amazing. Spent some time at church with some friends and uh, uh, got to meet, have a lot of great meetings there as well. And then Monday morning came about and for the Beacon of Hope Project, uh, we got the opportunity to launch a Facebook uh, post. And in the post, it talked about how the youth were uh, going to be able to come together and help design a uh, the basement part of the building. And so within 24 hours, we were able to get the... Um, get the um, group of of you together there were about 26 of you um that were out there all between the ages of about i think maybe 8 and 15 or so gave some great uh, uh recommendations and next steps we created or they created a tiktok page for us uh, i think it's called beacon.of.hope uh, dot two on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, definitely go there and uh, see the updates that are there. Uh, and then now the youth are working on a website for the Beacon of Hope project uh, and designing, continuously designing the uh, the downstairs basement area. We don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know who it's going to be used for. We don't even know if the youth are going to use it. We have no idea, but that's like the greatest part about this is that when we as adults can step out of the way and we allow the, the, the children of the community to and the youth of the community to express what they want um, within reason, right, within safety reasons, then uh, they have the opportunity. You all have the opportunity to get what you want. And so how cool is that? Like, why would you not want that to happen? It seems pretty fun to me. Um, and there was a lot of adversity after that uh, and some cool things. What ended up happening from there was we were on the radio um, from a local Christian radio station. I'm not quite sure which one it was. Um, and then about 20 minutes after I heard that, uh, we had a news broadcast uh, out of Des Moines actually message us. And so we were on the news to talk about the Beacon of Hope project and how we were bringing the youth together and what was going to be happening in the building itself. And so um, that was really fun. So if you saw the Facebook post, uh, I think it was KCCI on Tuesday night between 5 and 6. I think they aired it. Um, just talking about what, what opportunities we have there um, in that building for the community. Uh, and then I believe it was on Wednesday or Thursday, we had a, um, a, a GoFundMe page launched for the rooftop. So for those of you that have been paying any attention at all, we need a new roof on this building. It's uh, leaking every time it rains. And so there's some damage that's happening to the inside of it. And we know that, um, that we need to get the roof replaced so that once we get the roof replaced, then we can start drying out and then we can start working on portions of the building uh, so that we can open up this thing for occupancy in some cases. Um, and so, yeah, so we've got that. But one of the most difficult challenges or points of adversity we had this week was that I actually jumped on a plane to um, to fly back to California for a couple of days. 
And I flew from Des Moines to Denver. And the minute I landed in Denver, um, everything got canceled for me. So I ended up spending seven hours in the Denver airport walking around and praying um, and just thinking about the beacon of hope and thinking about my family and all the community members. And then I jumped on a plane at about 1030 or so at night and flew to Phoenix, Arizona, ended up staying in Phoenix for about eight hours overnight and then jumped on a plane at uh, 7 a.m. to fly to San Francisco. Um, the crazy part is, is that I was in a line in Denver with a couple hundred people that were pretty upset that their flights got canceled for one reason or another. I immediately got into the space that was like, okay, where can I find the uh, greatness or, or the opportunity that we have here? And um, immediately I went towards, what am I supposed to see? What am I supposed to be doing? I know I felt like I was supposed to be on this plane going to San Francisco to go see my wife and kids. However, um, there's a reason why I'm here. So when I shifted my mindset to the reason why I was present in that moment, I started to see things a little differently. And then when I flew from Denver to uh, Phoenix, I actually walked around the Phoenix airport and looked at all the art and I saw some details that actually are going to be potentially go most likely going into the building at the Beacon of Hope project in Oskaloosa, Iowa. So here I am getting diverted, thinking I'm going from Des Moines to Denver to San Francisco, when I actually crisscrossed the U.S. and went Des Moines to Denver to Phoenix to San Francisco. But I saw some details in that. And so I just want to leave this encouraging word for you that in the face of adversity, where can you find the hope? Where is the hope in everything that you're going through? I can tell you this. God does not want you walking around the fire right now in this season. He wants you walking through it. And he wants you to remember that there was another in the fire. And so when we trust him, when we trust that perspective, we then can go, everything going on in my life right now seems like chaos and seems like it's a fire. But I know that the Lord's with me and I'm just going to walk forth in faith and I'm going to see things differently. So once again, thank you so much uh, for supporting the Beacon of Hope Project in downtown Oskaloosa, Iowa. My name is Kevin Hempel, and uh, until we meet again next week, uh, just think about that as you're walking through your day today and walking through the rest of the week. And when you talk to others that are going through fires, trials, or tribulations, or troubles, um, that there is hope, there is a magnificent victory in all of that, and we just should just continue to walk in faith with that. Love you once again, and if you want to know more, uh, just message us on Facebook or message Steve Shetler's team, and we can talk to you then. Love you guys. Bye.